How long is this angle? 90 degrees, right? What about this one? 45 degrees. For the longest time, we've used degrees to determine angles and measurements. But today, I'm going to flip your whole world upside down and teach you a new essential measurement for angles. Radians. The first question everyone asks about radians is always why. Why are we suffering and learning this? The reason is actually quite simple. It's more logical to use radians. What I mean by this is that degrees is actually an arbitrary measurement. Degrees was created many, many centuries ago to measure stars in the sky, and they used this 360 system to do so. There was actually no math relation behind it, and due to this, it made math much more complicated than it needed to be. It's sort of like using the imperial system, just weird and made due to human reasons, not really due to math. Okay then, what makes radians any different? Aren't they a concept also created by humans? Well, sort of. Radians are actually based off of a radius, so it does have math behind it. When you say radius, do you mean like a circle radius? Yeah, so in order for us to learn radians, we actually need to know about the unit circle. So the unit circle is a circle with radius length 1 centered at 0, 0 in a graph. So just about the most standard you can get in a circle. Now a radian is basically the angle covered by an arc length equal to the radius. Whoa, that was a lot of random words I know. So I'll try to break it down for you here. Basically, think of an arc length equal to the radius. That's about this long. This arc length is one radius long. And think of the angle that covers that arc length. Here is the angle that covers this arc length. Since this arc length is one radius long, this angle is one radian. So since the radian is based off of a circle's radius, it will line up much nicer in the grand scheme of things, and you'll find yourself using it much more in the future. Now you notice that one radian doesn't quite fit on the circle nicely, and that's very true. One radian is actually quite an irregular unit that you won't solve for that much. Not even two or three or four radians are regular at all. Okay then, if one or two or three radians don't fit on the circle nicely, then what does? Yeah, let's actually see what does. To do that, let's see how many radians it takes to journey one revolution around the circle. If we take the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r, we can get the length of the arc that spans the whole circle. Since r is 1 in this circle, the circumference is 2 pi. Now how do we get the theta from arc length? Well, we can actually use the arc length equation, which is s, which equals arc length, equals theta times radius. So s equals theta times r. Arc length equals 2 pi, while the radius again equals 1. So the theta, or the angle to go one revolution around the circle, is 2 pi. Now since 2 pi is one revolution, that would also equal 360 degrees. Subsequently, 180 degrees equals pi, and 90 degrees equals pi over 2. So the reason why whole numbers won't fit as radians is because the whole system is based off an irrational number. So now that we have these radian conversions, let's label them on the circle based on where they go. Sort of like a protractor, but like a whole circle. It's good to note that on any unit circle, you start here on the right, and you go counterclockwise, which is the positive direction. So now let's label the three angles we know right now. Now, the only missing piece we have is the bottom, which is 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2. So now we have our four quarter points around the circle. Wait, so are we done now? Of course not! There are an infinite number of possible radians, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 5, pi over 100 even. But for the purposes of learning unit circle, you really really want to learn the big ones. Pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6. Those are the three big ones. Now the reasons that they're the big ones will become clear in the unit circle video, but I'm going to make that in the next video. Now you'll notice that these are all placed in the first quadrant, or on the top right of the circle. Since we're still in the graph, remember, we're centered at 0, 0. And that is because these are the most elementary versions. But we still must learn the angles in the second, third, and fourth quadrant too. Okay, but before we go on, what even are these angles in degrees? I'm having a hard time keeping track. Good question. If you're ever asked a conversion question, we can use the power of ratios to figure it out. Let's take pi over 3 as an example. If we want to take the degree version of this, we just have to use the ratio of degrees to radians. An easy ratio to remember, and the one that I personally use, is 180 degrees to pi radians. 
they are both equal and dividing one of them by each other will mean I'm still technically multiplying by 1. But which one goes on the top or the bottom? Well, it's actually quite easy. If you've ever taken chem, this is very very similar to stoichiometry. You basically want to put the unit that you want to cancel out on the opposite side, or in our case the bottom, so that they divide each other. In our case, 3 pi over 3 radians is on the top, so we want to put radians on the bottom for this conversion. Now the radians cancel out and we're left with degrees. So pi over 3 times 180 divided by pi equals 60, so it's 60 degrees. Now using this exact ratio on all the other angles, we can figure out that pi over 4 equals 45 degrees and pi over 6 equals 30 degrees. So it will all be placed like this on the first quadrant. Now remember what I said about all the angles for the other quadrants? Well, this monstrosity is what you have to remember. I know it seems super daunting right now, but a pretty good introductory memorization strat that I used was notice at the top and the bottom you have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. But then now, go one level closer to the middle. Now you have radian measurements with only denominators of 3. Okay, go one level down again, and now it's 4. And then it's 6. And then you have your 0 and pi. So that's kind of a good way to memorize the general idea. Now the reason you want to know all of these angles will become very clear in the next video where I cover unit circles, I promise. But for now, I've covered all there is to know about radians. One last little thing is that radians is a unitless measurement. Since radians is a ratio of two length measurements, they actually cancel out and it's a unitless measurement. In that you don't have to write radians after anything. You can say 2 pi or pi and you don't have to say radians afterwards. And a lot of the times, tests will leave the number blank as well in the questions, so you have to be careful. Anyways, I hope this helped you in some way and I wish you the best of luck with your studies and bye bye.